Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today in this autopsy, we are taking apart a self-powered, solar-powered AM FM radio. This is a thing, now this, this actually has a story. This was given to me by an ex-girlfriend years and years ago um, when, I, when we were living in the first geek house, I had a model train layout upstairs in the attic and I just wanted a radio for up there. And this was the radio for up in the attic, so it was a thing. It, has, it's got a solar cell on top, and it would weird me out every now and then, like we'd use it for something else, and I'd take it outside and it'd just turn on, so it was kind of weird. The way this works is you, you crank it up. And that's why it doesn't work anymore. Um, but it, it used to, you wind it up and it'd run for like an hour. It'd go for a long time. Just you crank it. You got to crank the hell out of it. You got to go for like, for like, I don't know, three or four minutes, but it worked for a long time. Eventually the ratchet mechanism for this obviously failed. So when you let go, it just goes crazy. So let's autopsy it and see if we can figure out what died. The rest of it's pretty simple. It's, it's really just a little radio. There isn't a whole lot to it, but it's cool. I like it. And it served me well for a lot of years. I, I definitely got an acceptable use life out of it. I don't know if I can find a screwdriver that fits it. Right. This looks promising. These screws are particularly hard to get out. Okay, I think that's all of them. And we'll have to see, there's a screw hole here, but it's in the middle of the handle and I don't, I don't want to take that apart if I don't have to yet. It's like some kind of very old glue. There's a little bit of gunge inside. Oh, hey! There's a belt sitting in the bottom. I wonder what the belt did. Okay, so. The date written on here is 1999, which is about right for when I got it. So this side should be fine. In fact, if, if I turn the radio on, I would expect that I could actually, there should be enough light in here to do this actually.
No, I'm not getting anything out of it. It's dead. Um, but we'll come back to that. Red is the antenna. I need to cut this off. that around. So this is where all the action is because that's just a, a radio. But we want to get down into here. pulley drive stuff, the gear drive stuff. And surprisingly well intact for something that spent its entire life in the worst of temperature extremes that Michigan has to offer. It lived in a Michigan attic. So half the year it was below freezing. And the other half of the year it was 140 degrees. So this thing's been through a lot. And it had a use life of 10 years before it failed. Take that back one off. a really stripped out screw. Oh, it's getting easier finally. All right. Okay, we got the screw out. gonna suck. Made of suck. I really want that whole unit. I don't want... Oh, all right. Well, that went way better than it could have. Okay, so that's our antenna feed. I'm gonna take that off. Take off the antenna feed here. Got a couple wires to the solar panel. That was just passed through, but there's no easy way to get that out. But if I cut them back, I'll be able to see where they went. Any problem. So we can separate all of that right off of there. Now this is a really big wind-up spring, like quite a very substantial wind-up spring. And it hooks around this, and this is the the winding coil. So this is this is what you crank up and it winds the spring off the drum onto here. So that's 
the spring for storing all of the mechanical energy, which is how I use this 99% of the time. And the spring would turn this. And it appears that this really simple, I don't even know that you could actually call it a bearing, finally died. And this goes to this pulley, or this belt, which goes down in here. So the belt came off. I don't know how you would go about getting that in there. Unless you ran it right through the teeth of the gear, which you could do. It's a rubber belt. Okay. So run it through the teeth of the gear. Put the belt around there. All right. Let me try something here. Take the antenna out. We have our little, I think that's the antenna screw. If it isn't, it'll do. So let's put this in here. So I'll put this on AM so we don't get in trouble for music, but. And see, all this does is this, the big spring system would turn this gear and this big gear turns very slow. There's a, a big mechanical advantage. I'll, I'll get it there where you can see. The big gear turns the little gear. This little gear is on the same shaft as this big gear. So this makes it spin a lot faster. You have to push really hard, but it spins way faster. This big gear turns this little gear here, so it's going faster again, and the little gear is hooked to a pulley. This pulley connects this belt to this little, and really this is just a little electric motor that they're hooking it backwards to work as a generator, and it just generates a couple volts. So it, does, it isn't a lot of power, but it's enough. And, and that's enough to drive the receiver, the amplifier, everything in here. And that's just a, a simple radio circuit. There's really not much to that at all. It's really, really rock simple little pocket transistor radio. And I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure of this, that watch really close what happens. I'll start spinning now. And I stop there. And you, you'll notice it takes a little bit for this to start making sound after I start cranking it. And it keeps making sound a little bit after I stop. So watch when I start and stop versus when you hear the sound. Now, if I do this for a little longer, so what this is doing, the power is coming from here and going into these two big capacitors. And these are acting as kind of a buffer. There will it'll be probably some basic power regulation. Um, I don't think it need to be rectified, but there might be a diode in there to protect it, make sure it's going the right way. Um, this seems to work either way. Let's try it this way. No, nope, it doesn't work that way. OK, so this only works one way. Yeah, it doesn't work the other way. So there's some, yeah, there's a big diode right down there. Um, but this is just a simple, these are charging the capacitors, and the capacitors are what this is using. And the capacitors act as like a buffer, very similar to, you see them in audio amplifiers a lot, where capacitors act the same thing. It's a, a filter capacitor setup. That is so cool. So if you scrounge one of these, I strongly recommend taking one apart. It's just kind of neat. What I'm wondering is can I put it back together again and it actually works? Because all I had to do was put that belt back on. 
let's see if we can fix it. That could be kind of, because there isn't, I mean, it's, it's a couple of gears and teeth and nothing really major to see here, but let's see if we can put it back together again. This is the part that's going to suck. Well, it's handy with the clear case. You can see it. This is the, there's a lot of force from the spring, so it's really not the easiest thing to get this in here. Okay, that's in. It's really in on one side. The other side, I'm not so sure. But I think I've got it where it's not going to explode in my face. It's totally safe. I can't get it back to... Oh, okay. okay. There we go. That feels way more better. Okay. Ah! Okay. Yeah, this is, this is not easy or fun. Screw it back together before it explodes again. Okay, I gotta put that really bad screw back in the handle. Totally useless fact about this that's kind of cool. This is the first device I've ever seen that had a Made in South Africa sticker on it. Now let's see if it'll crank up and work. So we've got, we've got domestic terrorists with an agenda. But it, it totally works now. So it works. And something kind of cool to watch here. This is, this is something really neat. I'll give it another crank. Now, watch how fast this moves. Now, the radio's off right now. But if I turn it on, it instantly starts moving way faster. Uh, James Blake, who uh, was a, at one point a famous tennis star, evidently, and um, evidently looked just like the person the cops were actually looking for. Have I got that one? That's right. And the louder I see, if I turn it off, it slows right back down. So what you're seeing this do is convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. And then it goes through the amplifier and all that. And the, and the, the electrical energy comes to the speaker, which gets turned back into mechanical energy. So it's a transducer. That's when you convert one type of energy to another. It's called a transducer. And this is really, really cool because as you turn this up louder, you see the spin faster. So it's it makes it really easy to, to see that. And 
We can use this for other things too. Like if we, because this is regulated here, if we took this and hooked it up to like a lamp or something and turn the light off, this will turn slow, turn the light on, it'll turn faster. So this might be something, I'm gonna see if I can work up some kind of demonstration to go with this, but this is neat and I wanna mess with it a bit. Look at that. You can totally see it turn faster. I'm sorry that we have to listen to really bad radio on that, but if I put in real music, then YouTube will yell at me. But it's really cool to see that, and this is neat. All right, we'll be back to play with this later. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Thank you for hanging out with me on today's Equipment Autopsy. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.